Good morning, Marriage Matters family. <clears throat> Maybe I need to say it again. Good morning, Marriage Matters family. Good morning. Good morning to Instagram. We are live on both parts. Well, what? Both social media platforms. Um, take some time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Take some time to get yourself up and moving around. It's eight o'clock on a Saturday, so it depends on what you did yesterday or how you're going to move about and do business. But get up, move around, get you some coffee, wash your face, brush your teeth, do all those wonderful things so you can have a conversation. <laughs> so we'll give you all a few minutes. I'll get everything going. Oh, good morning, Michelle. Good morning. I hope all is going well with you. Good morning, Tabitha. Y'all are coming on in this morning. So I hope you all had a, a great week. And we got a good topic for today. It's called Take a Bath. And so what I'll do is... um. As he reads the scriptures, I'll make sure that I go back and put the scriptures in the chat because we always like for you to go back and make sure that you read, study, and um, share with somebody else. So, just if, good morning, Luann. How are you? Hmm? Luann and Michelle good and Joel and good Tabitha. Morning, uh, Joel. Good morning, our family. All right. So, if you hear noises, you just have to deal with it. Have allergies, and I had to go get my tissue. As you can see, you already see my first time swollen. <clears throat> so that's just a part of me. You gonna have to accept. All right. So, good morning. Um, we're gonna be talking about taking a bath. All right. So that's what we're gonna discuss today. Take a bath. So I'm going to uh, ask you also to make sure you like the video. Okay, we understand, but we thank you for stopping in. Thank Ms. you, Ayala. We appreciate it. We thank you so much. We'll see you soon, hopefully. Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to be talking today, and the scripture is going to be coming from Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to start at verse number 17, and we're going to take that all the way down, I believe, to verse number, I'm going all the way down to verse number 32. So once you kind of get situated, then we're going to get started. Yes, so again. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to go from 17 to 32. We're going to kind of go in and dive in and look at all of those and see what we can do to... Um, Bring some awareness. 17 to 32. 30. It's going to be quite a bit. But, um, good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh oh, what happened? All right. There we go. So, thank you so much for just having a little time and hanging out with us. We hope that something we say or something that, you know, we bring to you will help you in your daily walk with Christ and also help you to love and experience and enjoy your mate, your God created helpmate in a way that, you know, can bring about a little bit more um, congruency, stability, unity. We've been talking about all that this week, unity. So, I'm going to give me a little bit more of this so I can kind of clear my throat. Good morning, Ms. Tabitha. Good morning, Mr. Johnson in the house, too. Good the Johnson people in the Good house? Good morning, AJ. How are you? And so um, this is going to be what it's going to be. Everybody knows what take a bath means. It means to, you know, that's what they used to say when we were growing up. Now, I don't never remember my mom ever saying, go take a shower. Like, go take a bath. And so when, when we go take a bath, that means that one, we need to get clean. But if you understand, when you go take a bath 
and in this in this and those people that were born in the late 60s and early 70s mm -hmm. and you get out that bathtub and you don't look right go take another bath that's what they tell you all right then because you you don't you didn't get out of there looking like you were supposed to it's so still some, before they see you go back yeah if some if some things going on uh because you know some people when we was growing up, you tell me to go take a bath, they go in there and run the water. You don't hear no splashing, nothing. And they come back out to help clean because they didn't clean it because they didn't take no bath. So that's a whole nother conversation. But today we want to talk about taking a bath. And I think once we get through all these scriptures, I think you'll have a good understanding of what that means. Uh, we just want to have a little fun. We want to enjoy each other. And then we want to see how we can make life for each other better so let me take a little bit more of this and try to get my throat right and then we're gonna get started i hope y'all had a great week you know this is saturday so the first day of the week is tomorrow make sure that you go before god and say hey i claim victory over this week i claim victory over myself let me make a difference in the life of somebody today and I was asked a question, and I didn't know how to answer the question, but I'm going to wait till the end to ask it, because I just thought about it. But um, Thank you, AJ. Here we go. Thank you. Here we go, people. Right. So let's start in Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to cruise on down. And what I did was I highlighted each one of them in different colors. So DeWanda, I can spend some time. Good morning. Hey, friend. Hey, DeWanda. Ooh. It's good to see you, ma'am. <laughs> and so it says in here, in verse number 17, and we in Ephesians chapter 4, mm -hmm. it says, In the Lord's name, then I warn you, do not continue to live like the heathen whose thoughts are worthless and whose minds are in the dark. It says they have no part in the life that God gives, for they are completely ignorant and stubborn. Verse number 19 says they have lost all feeling of shame. They give themselves over to vice um, and they do all sorts of indecent things without restraint that means that they do things that they know are not right and they don't care but we'll come back to that so in verse number 21 excuse me i'm sorry in verse number 20 it says that was not what you learned about christ you certainly heard about him as his followers you were taught the truth that in excuse me, you were taught the truth that is in Jesus. So here we go. So get rid of your old self, which made you live as you used to. The old self that was being destroyed by its deceitful desires. Your hearts and minds must be made completely new. And you must put on the new self, which is created in God's likeness and reveals itself in the true life that is upright and holy. No more lying. Hey. hey. Then each of you must tell the truth to each other. It says, it says, no more lying, excuse me. Then it says, each of you must tell the truth to each uh it to give me. I'll keep missing up. No more lying. No more lying then. Each of you must tell the truth to the other believer because we are all members together in the body of Christ. If you become angry, do not let your anger lead you into sin and do not stay angry all day. And I'm going to come back to that. Don't stay angry all day. Don't do it. Don't give the devil a chance. If you used to rob, you must stop robbing and start working in order to earn an honest living for yourself and to be able to help the poor. 
Do not use harmful words, but only helpful words, the kind that build up and provide what is needed so that you, what you say will do good to those that hear you. All right. And do not make God's Holy Spirit sad. Mm -hmm. It says, for the Spirit, we got to, if we don't get nothing, we got to. It says, for the Spirit is God's mark of ownership on you. I guarantee that the day will come when God will set you free. Get rid of all bitterness, passion, and anger. No more shouting or insults. No more hateful feelings of any sort. Mm -hmm. Instead, be kind and tenderhearted to one another and forgive one another as God has forgiven you through Christ. Woo! I done rolled it all the way back up to the front because now we got to spend some time talking about it. All right. so, we're going to break it down. We're going to break it down. We need y'all's input. Please Start comments, typing concerns. in the let's chat. Go. Type, type, type in the chat. Let's so let's go, go back. So one of the things they said was don't continue to live as the heathen does. And we were all heathens. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. We were all heathens doing what we wanted to do. You have some stages in your life. So we got different age groups of people on this uh, mm -hmm. on this Facebook. But there was an age when you started off and, and by mm -hmm. the time you got to middle school, you, you did some things. Mm -hmm. And then when you got to high school, you did some more things. And then when you got to college, you did some unforgivable things. And then when you became an adult, you did stuff that you wouldn't even want to talk about what you did in college. Mm -hmm. And so it says that those things and the way we used to be, we can no longer continue in that way. It says in, in the Lord's name, then I warn you, do not continue to live like the heathen whose thoughts are worthless and whose minds are in the dark. Mm -hmm. They have no part in the life that God gives you for they are completely ignorant and stubborn. I want to interject this though, because we talked about this uh, before and a lot of people will say, well, I didn't do anything. Well, that's not what it is. So in order to be able to get to that point, you have to realize the things that you do. Are they in the Lord or are they not in the Lord? Is he pleased with your actions or is he not pleased with your actions? You know, because those things that are done in secret come to the light. We're actually, whether good or bad, if mm -hmm. you did it in secret, it's going to come to the light. If you've been doing great things in secret, pleasing him, praising him, and doing all of that, what did he say? He will reward you openly. That what you, you do in secret. Yes. So again, even for the evil, the wrong, the disrespect, the disregard, the lies, all of that, if it's done in secret, uh -huh. it will be brought to the light. And regardless, you're going to have to pay the consequences for that. But again, we have to realize it mm. first. So when we talk about taking a bath, there's a lot of things that come with that, right? You know, even earlier before the scripture, verse number 17, earlier in Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about the body and how it's connected and all of the parts of the body are, are, are needed. They complement one another. Okay. And so when we talk about taking a bath, mm. it's a lot of stuff you got to pay. It's a lot of stuff you got to give attention to when you wiping and cleaning off your own body. It's a lot you got to give attention to. Because one thing about I noticed about I don't care what 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 body type you are, what color you are, you take a white towel and you and you and, and, and you dry off. Mm -hmm. You're gonna find out you missed all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, hey, show up. and the dirt is going to show up. It's going to be ruffled up like flakes. If you miss something and that something hit it and you ain't give it a good scrubbing mm -hmm. where you are, you're wet and soap has been applied to your body, but you may not be thoroughly clean. Mm -hmm. Don't park there yet. We'll park there a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But the reality is when we talk about who we were uh, before marriage, who we were when we got married, mm -hmm. 
our journey and who we are now, there are some things that should have been put away. Yeah, left behind. And if they have not, mm -hmm. don't beat yourself up over it. This is the time, mm -hmm. this is the day mm -hmm. that you were supposed to hear this so that you can take some inventory mm -hmm. on what needs to be removed from your, your, your stock. Mm -hmm. You're taking some inventory of what needs to be uh, discarded before loaded onto the truck for delivery. You take an inventory of what you know is going to either bring health to your bones or if it's going to bring, or if it's going to be something that gnaws at your bones. Because there's nothing worse than trying to get to your, that when you get to your destination and realize that you don't have all of what the order entailed for the inventory on that truck and you have to turn around and go back, that's a horrible feeling. That's a waste of time, it's a waste of energy, and it's a waste of money. So make sure that you have what you need, unpack the stuff that you don't need, and leave it where you're coming from. Don't take it where you're going to. All right. So where we are now, you are in the water stage. The water's running in the tub, and you are about to get in. So it says that when we used to be a certain way, the Bible says that when you have accepted Christ and you've decided to move on to do something different, that the person that you used to be is not the person that you currently are. Well, what does that have to do in marriage? It has everything to do in marriage and a relationship between two people. So let's go and dive into this just a little bit, a little bit deeper. It says, um, <clears throat> when you have given your life to Christ or when you have made a pivot in life and said, you know what? Some of the things that I've inventory should not have ever been on my shelf. Well, that's okay. Like I said, people want to go into all of this, uh, what I did and feeling all dirty and nasty. That's, the, that's, that, that's your own personal feelings, and that's the enemy. God doesn't waste time on all of that. He's too busy trying to get you lifted up. So it says in verse number 20, that was not what you learned about Christ. You certainly heard about him, and as his followers, you were taught the truth that is in Jesus. So in verse number 22, now we are in the water and it's time to apply a little soap. Now you can do it either way you want to. Some people, they apply soap to the towel and then they wipe down. Some people, they just put the soap directly to the skin. I don't care. You're trying to get dirt off you so it really doesn't matter. We don't have a cookie cutter way of taking a bath. It says that in verse number 22, mm -hmm. so get rid of your old self which made you live as you used to. The old self that was being destroyed by its deceitful desires. You don't have to sit in that tub holding on to that dirt. I think that when it's time to get out the tub, I'm pretty sure you want to get all that stuff off you because now it then rose up. Mm -hmm. The dirt is separated from your skin because the Bible doesn't say this, but this is just simple science. Uh, you're Well, it does. You're dying every day. Your skin die every day because if it didn't, you'd be one nasty mess. Because a dirty skin smell is a stinky skin smell. But when you remove that skin and that dirt and that water, it's going to go down into the uh, drain. But while you're there, it's floating around with you. And you can just see on that particular day or whatever you was doing, how dirty you were. Mm -hmm. So if you multiply that dirt to talking crazy, having evil thoughts, disrespecting people, disrespecting your spouse, talking crazy to him, talking crazy to her, leaving all that cloud floating around in your house and just, just damaging the atmosphere, then you are dirty mentally, you are dirty physically, and you are even more dirty spiritually. 
Now, it says that you must put on the new self, which is created in God's likeness and reveals itself in the true life that is upright. That is upright. That means that you know the truth. You know there are some things that you possibly could be doing differently. Mm -hmm. And you may choose not to do them. Yeah. God is saying that if you just grab a hold of one of them truths, because <laughs> you ain't got to grab hold of all of them, because I know we all got stuff. We want to try to fix everything, everything. You try to fix everything like the hairs on your head. I don't know how long Millicent stay stand in front of that mirror. But if you're trying to part hair and hide this or make this do that, hair is an unruly thing. It don't do everything that you want it to do. So then we try to buy stuff to make it do something, and it still don't want to follow. And that's sometimes how we act. There's some things that we know we shouldn't be doing, mm -hmm. and we do it anyway. Yeah. So we just as unruly as the hair on our head. Absolutely. But it's okay. Let's just dive in. Okay. When you make these mistakes, I've said it before, you don't have time to sit in the pool of, of disgust. You need to stand up and get out of the pool. You got to confess it and get it right, though. You know. Yeah, I mean, you confess it and get it right, but you don't have to sit there and constantly wallow, wallow in that. You confess it, you get it right, you move on. Because if you constantly keep going back and thinking about the same stuff and all that stuff, you, you can't go forward. So I have a question, and I want anybody to, to answer. Mm -hmm. Do you think if somebody has wronged someone or went against the desires of somebody, anybody, it doesn't matter, husband, wife, you know, friends or whatever. Do you think that person should, because I know it says con to confess your sins one to another. Mm -hmm. Do you think that person should wait till they get caught and called out and then apologize or walk in the truth and the light of God since that's who we're trying to portray mm -hmm. and go to that person and confess what they did? Thoughts? Come on, y'all. There's no reaction. Okay. Luanda, which which um what part are you referring to? So do I have any while we while Luanda is telling me what she's referring to, does anybody have an answer to what I said? Do you think you should wait knowing that what you did was wrong? Do you think you should wait till that person calls you to the carpet on it and then you confess it and get it right? Or just you know what you did was wrong, even though it may be hurtful to the other person. If we're supposed to be walking in truth and mm -hmm. love and intentionality to be transparent with each other, because it says that in there, do you bring it to the table yourself? All these people on here ain't gonna get no answers. This is now mean to get tired and Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got you. That makes sense. So um either way, what Millicent just said, either way, you still need to uh address it. You need to address it because so, it will cause more damage and to to your life, not mm -hmm. just yours. It may not even bother you. You may go on and it's okay and you don't feel no kind of way about it. But the person that you are in relationship mm -hmm. with, they know when something is wrong. You know, that's why God gives us discernment in the spirit. Mm -hmm. So when that discernment comes up, okay. you know, don't don't do that to the other person. You know, don't don't lie about it. Don't try to cover it up because it'll come to the light. So let's go back because I want to make sure we got a lot going on in this chat. Mm -hmm. So we we started we we started with so Bridget said <laughs> she said yuck you know mm -hmm. and then after that and AJ said you know stop rehearsal you know um, then the one that said is no reaction okay you know. And we can we can go back to that a little bit deeper because you have to have some kind of reaction. But but that's a human thing. Yeah. When you've gotten 
when you time get tired of something. And it's been over and over yeah. and over again. You know, you're trying to just get everything taken care of so you mm. can move on. Because it's easier to move on when you have the whole truth mm. than a half a truth. Yeah. And I always say a half truth is a whole lie. So, and it's just not acceptable if you're trying to live a healthy whole life. Mm. So she said, you know, no, I mean, you get tired. You mm -hmm. just don't react anymore. I think you just acknowledge it. And that's what we said regardless. Mm -hmm. You just acknowledge it. AJ said some things are under the blood. Luanda said bring it to the table. And I'm trying to figure out why yeah. it's not. Okay. Let me just slide this back down. Oh. See, you're moving the whole thing. I got Okay. You. Oh, it has to go this, to the top. This, this okay. part. There we go. All right. And so then Miss Charlie said I would go to the person and confess. Mm -hmm. And then Bridget said something, but you need to move it up. So we okay. can see what it says. LaWanda said, bring it to the table. Uh -huh. Once it's right, keep it right. Absolutely. Yeah. But you got to get it right first. <laughs> bring it before the Lord first. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Then it's being addressed. Absolutely. That is. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And so that's what. Good morning, Brother Bryce. Hey, Bryce. Good morning. And so that's kind of what I kind of said is that. Please don't sit in all of that stuff. You know, AJ said, once you address it, have the moment and don't make it a lifetime moment. That's right. You got to let stuff go. But if you, you got to get it out there first, mm -hmm. you know. You got to get it out there, but you got to let it go. If you keep holding on to stuff, all it's going to do is be a problem. And but if gotta... once you get it out there, and if you were the offender, apologize, but make it be in, an intentional apology. Don't be saying, okay, well, I just apologize because I just want to get, get over this and, and just move on. No. The other person has feelings. Apologize for it and be sincere about the apology. That make that makes sense. I said amen, but I'm trying to see what you dismiss the person after they bring it to the table makes a person stop reacting. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, because when they do that again, that's disregard, that's disrespect, and dismissiveness mm -hmm. to your feelings. Even if so, if the other person is wrong, you bring it to their attention and they just dismiss it. Mm -hmm. That's not reacting in love, people. That is not reacting in love towards whoever the whoever you offended. Mm -hmm. If you just okay, well, yeah, I did it, you have no remorse, no, just no nothing. And I apologize just to get through it. Mm -hmm. I want us to not do that. Because that's not having true, genuine love for that person. All right. Bridget said apologize. Uh -huh. Bryce said yes, it does. Okay. All right. Good morning. All right. So um, this is where it says that we can move a little bit. Let me say I'm trying to make sure it says get rid of your old self, which made you live as you used to. The old self that was being destroyed by his deceitful desires. Your hearts and minds must be made completely new. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> while you taking that bath and getting rid of all that stuff, then that stuff should go away. Uh, and once it goes down the drain, I don't think nobody goes outside and tries to meet back up with the dirt before it go completely out of the house. I don't think anybody does that. When you take a bath, all the no dead skin cells and all that crap that needs to be washed away from you is being washed away from you to keep you in, in a form of newness. And so when you think about your relationship with your spouse, that, that act of newness is individual to you because you're an individual person. But at the same time, because you all are one, then there's some newness in how you go about uh, experiencing each other. You got to look at new ways to do things and you can't keep doing things the same way and expect a different result. If those ways are negative like this, if they are not where you've removed, removed your old self, got rid of your old self, make sure that the old self die. It's a daily, it's a daily grind to make sure that that old self don't re-manifest itself into your life when you know that that particular person was not a person that brought glory and honor to God. All yourself, 
all your your kids. I mean, it's just it's a it's a domino effect. It says, and you must put on a new self, which is a created in God likeness, and reveals itself to it reveals itself in the true life that is upright and holy. No more lying then. It says, no more lying then. Each of you must tell the truth to the other believer. So that truth, you you got to work on how you deliver it, but you do need to tell the truth to each other uh, so that that way people understand where you stand, all right? Because we are all members together in the body of Christ. So this goes for your communication inside first with your spouse and your children. Then it's outside when you're dealing with people because you're still on stage. Not that you're trying to be somebody that you're not. You're really trying to be who you are, okay? You're trying to be who you are, and everybody has things that they got to deal with, but you definitely want to make sure that you respond in a way that gains someone, then lose someone. Here it is. Now we're starting to get ready to uh, kind of um, dry off to see if we're really clean, all right? Hold it's, on, I want, I want to go back <clears throat> and address this. So definitely uh, Bryce will do that, mm. but one thing... Um, and I'll say that I used to feel like that too. Mm -hmm. But one thing you have to realize, what do they do for you? They didn't, those are the people that didn't die for you. They ain't hanging across for you. Mm -hmm. They don't pay your bills. They don't put gas in your car. They don't take care of your son. They don't pay your bills. Oh, so yeah. does it, so does it really matter? I got yeah. it. Okay. Right here. Okay. So it says, oh, wow. oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm, okay. I just want to see that part right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go up some. So, you know, there is no perfect person mm -hmm. that don't exist. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and because she's sitting next to me, she, she know I ain't perfect. Oh, no, ma'am. So, <clears throat> the, the really, you know, <clears throat> If you're scared to look inward, you're not going to be, you're not going to be no earthly good. You know, we can go back and forth and we can talk about a lot of stuff on our East TV broadcast. Mm -hmm. But when you're scared to really go inward yeah. and look at yourself, mm -hmm. you you got some issues because you're really not going to get past that. You got to go in and look at you yeah. and you got to be willing to in, embrace that. I told a person, and this is off topic. But I told a person this because there was an issue and I had to really, you know, I think I had to be, I think I had to, I might have went to my old self this time. So I have to ask for forgiveness. But I had to ask a person and I had to leave my Mr. Johnson and become Coach Johnson. So when I became Coach Johnson, which he says, don't put on the old self. Thank you. I'm sorry. I asked the person, I said, why don't you ask people how they experience you and see what they say? <laughs> yeah, that's inward looking. That's inward looking. I'm not pointing at her because I'm talking about her. I'm talking about if you really want to know something, you might want to ask that question. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about Melissa because we had this conversation. It was something else. How do you experience me and don't try to talk. Don't even interrupt. Let them say how they experience you because you may be walking in some euphoria or foolery thinking that, you know, you, you're not in that way and you are. All right. You are. I am. I know when I'm being a butt. I know when I'm being a butthole. All right. But the reality is that if you ask yourself that, if you ask people, because we know how we are, we know what our quirks is. Mm -hmm. How do you experience me? I dare you to do it. Because <laughs> you're going to find out some stuff if they honest. But if they honest, they love you enough to tell you the truth. All right. So, no. <laughs> No man. No, I knew what he. I knew she know what, what I'm talking about. To. We talking about something else, and so it says. Now this is where we kind of, kind of, kind of hover a little bit. It says, if you become angry, do not let your anger lead you into sin. 
and do not stay angry all day. Mm -hmm. I think we have a we have a habit of doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't like the way I was being treated or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you be a sour puss all day, and you allow that negative energy to 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 overshadow your whole day when you could actually decide to be happy, regardless of not to not to mean that you don't have feelings and it don't bother you. Okay. But what I'm saying okay. is, <laughs> what I'm saying is, is mm -hmm. that you know being angry all day. How much is that going to help you to be who you are? What so you I'm going to say this too. Mm -hmm. That doesn't always mean being angry all day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, depending on what happened, depending on the situation, what was said, what was done, mm -hmm. depending on that. Sometimes it's just that person processing it, the power, taking the power of the pause and being creative in how they articulate their thoughts and their words so they don't come out ugly, so they don't say mal malicious words, so they don't act out of character. Mm -hmm. It's not always walking around angry. It's about trying to process that thing. It's about trying to, not trying, it's about being in that space of peace mm -hmm. and breathing and pausing so you can think so you can calm yourself down. So mm -hmm. when those words do come out, they're very intentional. Yeah. And it's not just something said out of anger. Because you know, when you say things out of anger, it's really hard to take those back. So being quiet and silent is not always walking around in anger. It's about getting a hold to yourself. Yeah. And being in peace in God. So he can direct all of that and orchestrate all of that. So when it is said and the actions are taken, they are full, fully intentional. Good morning, brother. Brother Ed, one love in the house. Good morning. Good morning, brother Ed. Let's say I'm sorry you feel that way. Or and so I'm I'm just gonna say this because we always be about being real on here. I can't stand that because that's sorry and that is not an apology. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sorry you feel that way. Or in. That is not an apology. And that's one thing I'm truly learning. We have to teach other people what we will and will not allow and how to handle us. Mm -hmm. Because if it's your spouse, your spouse is a gift to you from God. Be careful how you handle the spot, your, your gift mm. that was given to you by God. The one that hung on the cross and died for you. Jesus Christ mm -hmm. hung on the cross and died for you, for you. Your spouse is a gift. So you need to be careful how you handle that gift from God. Because mm -hmm. when you mishandle it, things don't turn out well. People think they're getting away with stuff <clears throat> and it's not going to come to the light. But again, going back to what we said earlier, whether it was good or bad, things always come to the light. You get rewarded openly, whether mm -hmm. it's either way. So we already talked about if you become angry, do not let your anger lead you into sin and do not stay angry all day. Mm -hmm. Do not give the devil a chance. You have to so so we, we talk about those things, but when you already see that there are some things that's rising up that could be divisive, then don't don't. Don't put yourself in a position to be a pawn, mm -hmm. you know, because that's what winds up happening. It says, don't give the devil a chance. It didn't say that you weren't going to have a disagreement or not like what the person said or did or the action that they displayed. What it says was, you don't recognize that mm -hmm. uh, you starting to feel a way mm -hmm. and they already feel that way evidently because they're cutting up. And now you go dive in. But if you dive in with, and there's no water in the pool, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes this foolishness. And now the enemy can just be like, puppet, puppet, puppet. You know, we just puppet, 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 puppet. And so you don't really want that. So it's, once you recognize that, like she said, the power to pause is to stop, mm -hmm. to breathe, to reflect, to come back with something that's actionable mm -hmm. that will actually be something that a person can take from your response or from the way you handle it and then be able to use that. <clears throat> oh, I like that. So Bryce said, 
use the eighth method, which is assess, process, and evolve. Amen, brother. So Christ. you assess the situation. Yes. You process all the parts that went into it, and then you evolve. How are you going to handle that? So, and I think it's the same thing with Bryce, what you're saying, but I think I called mm. it something else when we were talking about the different R's. So it's like you, 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 something, you process it, and then you come. So when he says evolve, mm. when we talked about a plan, you put a plan in place mm. so it don't happen again, or you put a plan in place so if this does happen again, you know how to deal with it. Mm. So Bryce, whenever you can uh, get a chance, if there's like a whole um, process to that mm -hmm. or an outline to the eight method, then um, just shoot it over to me. I'll just put it in here. If you can type it out, hey, put it in the chat too so yeah. everybody else can benefit. Yeah, so everybody it. else can benefit from it. So it says if you used to rob, you must stop robbing and start working. So I'll just take the robbing out right quick. If you're a man, your butt should be working. If you're a man, you should be working. If you're not working, that's an issue. It says, if you know, you must not rob. You must stop robbing and start working. And the only reason I say that because there's so many people out there shooting and trying to take stuff from people because their butts ain't got no job, no education. And they're out there trying to take something from somebody that they really put in the time to work and do something. And they butts out there just, you know, wreaking habit because they don't want to take no kind of steps to really be a man and actually show that they can produce something uh, either with their hands or even work in a team. Either way, work. But that all that foolishness and that stupidity is about, oh, I'm going to be my own boss. Well, how's that working out for you? You still broke. You got to work. You got to take care of yourself. And I don't understand, I don't understand that mentality uh, with people. Uh, I'll be my own boss. You don't be your own boss with no plan. You don't have a plan. We ask you what you're going to do. How much money you can save that? You can save no money, but you want to be your own boss. I mean, just, that's going to get my last nerve. I ain't just, that, that's just me right now. Ain't got nothing to do with really pretty much with the lesson. But I, 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 I see what he said. He said you must stop robbing and start working. So I just went to attend about the robbing part. I was just saying about the working part, but like I say, because there's so many people out there that that don't matter what color they are, they ain't working. And you need to be working. I don't understand. I just don't. I can't understand that. Um, but that, that's another, another conversation. It says, do not use harmful words, but only helpful words, the kind that build and provide, provide what is needed so that what you say would do good to those that hear you. Mm -hmm. This is not a show. This is for you to really think before you speak. Mm -hmm. And if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say anything at all. Mm -hmm. Focus on what you need to do. Like she said, power to pause, think about what you're going to say, put a plan of action on how you're going to deliver what you need to deliver. It didn't say to not involve the truth mm -hmm. or not involve how you feel. It didn't say anything like that. It just said, watch what you say and then the delivery of it. Mm -hmm. What I like right here is it says, and do not make the Holy Spirit say it. Mm -hmm. This is for everybody. You better get this. It says, <clears throat> for the spirit is God's mark of ownership on you. Mm -hmm. Your butt don't belong to yourself. When God died, when Jesus died for you, for me, and for everybody else, mm -hmm. you was purchased with, with a price that you can never, ever repay anyway. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is, is that his spirit is his mark of ownership on you mm -hmm. and it's a guarantee if you choose to walk upright it's a guarantee that one day mm -hmm. you know the day will come when you will be set free totally so i have a question too so we <clears throat> know that we go we know that we don't belong to ourselves mm -hmm. so what does it say about when you get married it says that your your body is not your own mm -hmm. correct okay it says, get rid of all bitterness. Mm -hmm. uh, don't do that. It says, get rid of all bitterness, passion, and anger. Mm -hmm. No more shouting or insults. Mm -hmm. um, no more hateful feelings of any sort. Mm -hmm. Instead, be kind and tender-hearted to one another and forgive one another as God 
uh, has forgiven you through Christ. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you walk around being built and nose stuck up, nobody knows what's going on and you just carry it on. I mean, that's okay for if you want to be in that way. But the Bible says, get rid of all of that and all of the anger. And, and, and a way to do that is to be able to have to come to a conversation to talk about it. Right. Uh, oh, <laughs> hey, Katrina, this is, I mean, uh, Katrina, this is um, the good news translation. It's for those people like me that need it in the, um, in the raw, basic form. Well, I don't need to be confused by no words. This is the good news old school translation. So if any of you ever had a good news Bible, it's got different words in there that make you understand, you know. <laughs> All right, Uncle Oliver. Okay, okay. He said in sickness and in health, through the good times and the bad, make lemonade. Take the leftover chicken and make soup. Sometimes you just get together and have potluck, but don't leave the table without nourishment. Ooh. Well, that's some words right there. My, right, okay. I wish I had a, a mic drop emoji. I'll put that right there. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Katrina, that's the, that's the translation. So a lot of times yeah, I use that because I need to understand. And sometimes, you know, other words, they kind of be woven together. And in some translations, I don't get the understanding that I need. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I use this good news translation, I, I get a better understanding of how it breaks down some of the words and some of the gaps in there that I may not get. Um, what? Oh, you missed Bryce was saying something. No, I was trying to open it, open it all the way up. Okay. Okay. He said you explained it well. Says when you get triggered emotionally by the situation, just bring the eight. <laughs> I like that. Out in yourself. Assess okay. what happened yeah. and why it triggered an emotional response from you. Mm. The process then process it with the facts, not the fiction via your faith. Now learn from what you are under learn. Now learn from your, your understanding, understanding and evolve, evolve and move, move on. on. Okay. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you for, for thank you for them. putting that in we there. You want to take your acronym and kind of do something to it that we, that wasn't there. Right. That so explain. that's why I wanted you to put that in there. Oh, so yeah. Um, I'm in Ephesians chapter 4 and 17 to 32. Um, oh yeah, Miss Bridget put it in there. So pretty much, hey, this is what we need to do, people. Why do so many Christians use the Bible as manipulation? Um, a lot of people use the Bible as manipulation really just to get their own way sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I'm just being honest, Al, just to justify their actions or to make it seem like, well, what I did wasn't so bad, but look at what they did. Mm -hmm. You know, people do that all the time. Yeah. And it's not right, you know. But that's why it's best for us to know the Bible for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, so the that way when people do that, it's okay to call somebody on the carpet because you're doing it as long as you're doing it in truth and in love, mm -hmm. and they want to give you just this one line, but then mm -hmm. you go back and give them the other four lines before that and the three after mm -hmm. that one that they gave you. You know, people do that all the time. People don't do what they want to do to mm -hmm. benefit themselves, regardless how it hurts or affects somebody else. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you said that word. So, Al, you know, don't allow nobody to manipulate you. Mm -hmm. You know, once God has given you the word and it's clear and you understand what it means, mm -hmm. you don't have to feel any, you don't, you don't have to be lured into feeling like, well, I, I'm crap or I feel bad because mm -mm. if you're doing what you know is right and you walking, it's sometimes going to be a sucky feeling to feel that way because the person is not getting it. But on the other end, it already said that when you do these things and you do them in the right way, it says, do not use harmful words, but only helpful words, the kind that build up and provide what is needed so that what you say will do good to those who hear you. And then we talked about don't make the Holy Spirit upset and also understand that the price that was paid for you and for me was a price that we can never pay back. But the reality is, is that we have to understand that we were purchased. And when somebody purchases something and they care about it, they treat it very, they treat it well. 
you know, God purchased us with the blood of his son, but he treats us very well. Because some of the stupid stuff we do and say, we still get another day to fix it. And everybody don't get that. And so you need to be really understanding of the grace that we get on a daily basis. The grace that we get that we don't deserve, we shouldn't even have. We get on a daily <clears> basis. <throat> and so I want us to really kind of hone in on that. So we started talking about in the beginning is really about you know, understanding who we were as it relates to walking in Christ. Now, at the end of this, it says, instead, be kind and tender hearted to one another and forgive one another. And as God has forgiven you through Christ. So basically, if you didn't really get all of this and understand this, you started out in verse number 17, and it was teaching you all of this from verse number 17 all the way to the end. It was teaching you how to forgive. That's basically what it comes down to. It was teaching you how to take sequential steps to forgive a person, to forgive yourself. And it's a lot to unpack mm -hmm. in verses 17 to 32. But you can take your time, read. You can take your time and focus on a few scriptures at a time. Or you can just really be, like I said, you can really be, transparent and say, God, which one of these I need to dive into? I got a real good feeling about it. But Lord, which one of these I really need to focus on? Because we, we can't fix everything all it, just right now. You know, you just can't. But we um, but what you can do is say, Lord, hey, I know there's some giddy stuff in me mm -hmm. and I really want to deal with some of these things. So which one should I address first? Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Katrina, for addressing Al's uh, okay. uh, comment. Yes, thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on out mm -hmm. there. So like Millicent said, you really need to study for yourself mm -hmm. because the Bible says, you know, you need to steal away mm -hmm. and you need to get... so. You you need to go seek after God. It mm -hmm. ain't about him always trying to find you and you praying and all that stuff. Right. You need to go and find him because in that in that pursuit of him, he gonna he gonna meet you somewhere. But where he gonna meet you at is gonna be free of distractions. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be free of phone calls, free of anything that will stop you from hearing what you need to hear in that time. Right. So I'll out and I'll say this too, I'm uh, going back to address your comment. Um, people don't always hit the mark. And sometimes right. they feel like, you know, oh, I'll tell them God told me to tell and and I've understood that, mm -hmm. you know, but that's why again, like Katrina said, it's good to get the word for yourself and mm -hmm. know the word for yourself. Because if somebody says something to you and it doesn't line up with God's word, then you know you don't receive that. Mm -hmm. You don't receive that in your heart. You don't receive that in your spirit. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, we always say, even on here, even though we're reading the Bible, we're talking about it, you go back and read it for yourself. Mm -hmm. So you know, so that when people come with you, come at you with the foolishness, you see it for what it really is. And that's what I call walking with your eyes, your spiritual eyes wide open. Mm -hmm. Then that way can't nobody get over on you. Amen to that. So... Absolutely. Bridget said we need to test the spirit. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You try to spirit by the spirit, but you got to know the spirit first before you do that. Mm -hmm. You have to know it. That's still the way you got to you figure it out. I don't care if it's in the car or whatever. How do you mm -hmm. go and pursue? But remember now, we're talking about pursuing after God. We ain't asking. We ain't talking about, you know, what you want and all this stuff. We're talking about you taking off after God like he on a plane and you trying to catch him before he take off. Right. You got to go find him. Mm -hmm. You got to go find him. You got to go <clears throat> find him. Mm -hmm. That's all I can tell you. You got to go find him. And in that place where work and people mm -hmm. and comments and suggestions and all this, so all that cannot be a part of your pursuit. Mm -hmm. Your pursuit is I did some crappy stuff today mm -hmm. and nobody knows you better than, than you. 
Nobody knows me better than you. Mm -hmm. So can I find you for a second? So I can just tell you how much I appreciate the fact that you allowed me to live today and through some of my foolishness, you did not sever your love away from me. You still love me now, even though I probably cursed the five minutes ago, you still love me now, mm -hmm. even though I act like I couldn't respond to my spouse or my, well, you still love me. You know, if you go and find him with a tender heart as though in, in that way and really talk about what you really want to focus on, you can get what you need. Go find him. And when you find him, don't be asking for nothing. Go find him because he deserves to be found. He deserves to be lifted up. He deserves to be magnified and glorified. Get into that place of thinking and praising and understanding that the only reason you exist is out of mercy. The only reason you exist, we. Now, let me say you like I'm just some. only reason we exist is out of his mercy. And with that, Lord, I ask you to find and deal with some of the stuff that I have, some of the stuff mm -hmm. that I'm dealing with, some of the stuff that you can definitely cleanse me of that can't nobody else do. So, <laughs> I, I do okay. Some people might be eating their food and they just might be trying to make me feel good. <laughs> But I'm just messing around. So, brother, so I, Uncle Oliver says, standing back to back, you can both see 360 degrees. We used to always show that when we were standing back to back because my wife can see what's coming my way and I can see what's coming her way. Marriage is a lifetime partnership. You have to protect your investment in order to prosper as one in Christ. And that's and that's what we are. But the, but the investment. But the one thing is, though, and Uncle Alva, that is so a thousand percent true. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, we get so caught up in life mm -hmm. where we forget that. We forget our investment. Mm -hmm. We forget about the one who truly has our back. We forget what they really mean. So when we get our sights mm -hmm. on other people and in the environment and caught up in life and all of that, mm -hmm. don't forget the one who's had your back. I'm not mm -hmm. talking about the one that died for you. He he got you 360 all mm -hmm. the way around. But that spouse, that spouse, mm -hmm. again, is a gift from God. So be careful how you handle your gift. Mm -hmm. Because when you mishandle your gift from God, you slapping God in his face. It's mm -hmm. not good. Be careful how you handle your gift. Mm -hmm. Seeing life from God's view. Think about it. Absolutely. I was reading one book that how a man was kind of mishandling his wife mm -hmm. and talking to her crazy. And then something got, he was in his office and he was a pastor. And he was like, see your wife as my daughter mm -hmm. and handle her accordingly. So we gonna leave y'all with that. Investigators doesn't go, what? You might want to clarify that. Yeah, part. I don't understand. If investigators doesn't go, might want to retype that AJ so we can understand it earlier. Yeah, not real sure about that. Um, Instagram, I'm gonna go ahead in because if it's past an hour, I know that we won't okay. be able to it'll I won't be I able to post Ms. it. Ginger. So Ginger and Brother Ed and Tabitha, Tabitha. thank you. Love y'all. And if you want to catch the rest of it, go to my it's Facebook and you'll Facebook. be able to, to catch it. Love y'all. It says, what about people? It says, what about, hold on. Okay. Let me just go up a little bit because I can't see. I see what she's saying. Aye. Well, have, use the, use the yeah. mouse so you can see it. Yeah, because I'm not able to. And they're getting at it now. Now the chat going so fast, I can't keep up. That's all right. right. Just, uh, just It says, um, cool, wow. Okay, I look so. Oh goodness, it keep moving. Hold on. All right, because I can open it up so we can see the whole thing. Open it up so we can see it. Hold I'm, on, y'all keep y'all keep going. Y'all keep going, people. Keep going. I'm just trying to open this up so we can see everything. Okay.
So then that way we can check it all out. All right, come on, catch up. There all right, there we go. Yes, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, so we stop that, right here. Stop right there. Sin lies in God's view. That's what the scripture said. And then Al Jackson said, I hate the Christianity of the church. And I think it's too black people. So I saw, uh, you know, I think that it's really just a person's experience. And so sometimes you have to realize that uh, people may be speaking from a point in time when they, when, when it was their experience, and some of that may not be backed up with the word. Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, you have to realize that, you know, um, I'm going to tell you something that's interesting since you said that, um, uh, Brother Al. It's, uh, we was listening to Al Sharpton, and a woman got on Al Sharpton. It was, it was last Sunday. And she said, I don't believe in women leadership. They should stay in their place. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. shouldn't be, they shouldn't be in the front. Men should be in the front. And um Al Sharpton said, Who are you? And she said, he said, What did you say? And he let her know, you are highly mistaken. He said the Bible used women early on, Esther. He used Esther to be able to keep two people from getting into conflict. And because of that, she was crowned queen in a way where people respected her. He said, there are plenty of women in the Bible that were in leadership. So I don't know where you get that from, that mode of thinking, but I don't know what Bible you reading. He said, but you need to focus on. Now, anytime women in leadership, it falls to ruin. So I know that she was on something, but that's okay though. Mm -hmm. She's able to speak her mind. Have, that's why it's a show. So that people can be able to talk and speak, you know, uh, their their mind and their peace. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what about people we say uh, stay in toxic situations because we have history? So what I say <clears throat> to that, the thing is, when you realize that it's getting toxic, that's what they have therapist for. Mm -hmm. And when you refuse to go to therapy, but you know you either in something toxic or you the one that's creating the toxicity mm -hmm. and you still refuse to go get some help, mm -hmm. it's a problem with that. Yeah. Self-care is mental health and mental health is everything. Point blank period. And that's all I'm going to say on that one. Brother Bryce, we love you and mm -hmm. everything is okay. And things happen for a reason and sometimes it's beyond our control. And no matter what happens, Brother Bryce, it's a learning experience, something that you will be able to support people in mm -hmm. because of your experience. So it ain't nothing but love, and, and you got this. You got this. You understand? Your foot going forward is firmly planted. Mm -hmm. You know where you're going. You know what it takes to take that next step. I'm going to speak a blessing of you, Brother Bryce, and just ask God to give you strength. Every time you take a step, I pray that God give you more strength. Mm -hmm. Every time mm -hmm. you take that step, more strength, mm -hmm. more strength, more strength, more strength. Because I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. All right. You take, but but I'm, I'm going to take it a step farther. All the information you're getting out, all mm -hmm. the tools that you're getting out, pack those up, study mm -hmm. them. Study them, mm -hmm. use them, so then that way you'll be ready for your queen when she comes. Amen. It says, "What book? What, what book were you talking about?" I have to. Um, I got it on my shelf over there, Lawanda. When I I can't remember the name of it, but I know it when I see it. Mm -hmm. So I'll pull it from my library and I'll uh, text you a screenshot of the book. Okay. So Katrina it, said, love that we need to stop mishandling our gift. Amen. Absolutely. All right. We got he AJ. said no. He said don't end, uh, don't end the show. This is good. good. That's okay. why we still on here for Facebook. Uh, the Instagram, I had to end it because after an hour we won't let you post it. But we still we still going. So y'all keep it coming. So this was asked to me and I didn't know how to respond. So What's I'm that? gonna ask it to you all. Can everybody hear me? I'm going to ask this question to you. When is the last time, and Brother brother Ed, it, you, I know you're not on here because you was on Instagram, but he asked a question. He said, when is the last time you told yourself that you love you? Oh, man. 
I, I, I didn't even know how to respond. When is the last time you told yourself that you love yourself? What you typing? Because I don't see nothing going in. Oh, nothing. Uh -huh. If I get down here when I'm supposed to. Okay, go ahead. When is the last time you told yourself that you love yourself? I could not respond. I said I do affirmations and I say positive stuff to myself in the morning, but I can't even remember when the last time I told myself I love myself. I don't even I didn't even know how to respond to that. So even if you don't respond now, I want you to think about that. Patrina said every day. The day and the other day when I spend ninety dollars on me. Well, if you take away the $90, then when did you say? <laughs> we love you too, Unc. First, the first law of nature is self -preservation. preservation. But see, some people, like I'm a behind the scenes person. So, you know, and I have to agree with my wife about the pouring out and the pouring out. And so now we try to really spend a lot more time on what's being poured in each other. Because you, if you can't even answer that question, mm -hmm. it might be because you don't even see yourself in that way, mm -hmm. you know. And I get it. But those of you that say tell yourself that you love yourself and you do it every day, I applaud you. Because when you pouring out and pouring out, and you're not thinking about what needs to be poured in, mm -hmm. you could really be missing some valuable love and attention. Not I'm because, say it huh? either, it either, sorry, not to cut you off. I'm going to say this too. It even makes uh, more room for you to get yourself pulled down because if you're not telling yourself that you love, mm -hmm. that you love you, that means that you really don't see the value in yourself, but you're mm -hmm. always pouring out to others. Mm -hmm. You know, you're always uplifting, elevating, promoting other people. Mm -hmm. And then you're not telling yourself that. Yeah. Well, people feed off that energy. So if you don't value you, what makes you think other people going to value mm -hmm. you? And that's something that I've learned recently. If I don't value myself, how do I expect my spouse to value me? Mm -hmm. How do I expect my kids to value me? And they're going to treat you accordingly. So that's where things need to change. Yeah, so um, and like I said, positive affirmations, but that's not the same as telling yourself, that you love yourself, mm -hmm. that you, you, you like, like, what's you important? You know, you. I mean, you need to make sure you do that. Uh, so, be real and forgive yourself, Amen. Yeah, because even if you didn't do it, now you need to look at yourself and see the potential of you, and not what you don't have. Mm -hmm. See the potential of you and the and the possibilities of greatness every day. You know, you can deal with the other stuff. Like I said, go before God and say, Lord, hey, well, I need to deal with it. But forgive yourself. You done took the bath. The skin cells have been removed. You are now clean. And then you approach a new day with grace if you get up. And guess what? Life tells you again that there will be skin cells that's dying all day and you need to take a bath the next day so that you can get that stuff off so that you can allow your new skin cells to breathe and the old dirt that's going to wash down into the drain is something that you don't want back anyway. So, And that's why the mm -hmm. Bible tells us that we should die to ourselves daily. Mm -hmm. All right, people, we're going to get ready to shut it down, but we really appreciate you giving us an hour of your time. This is one of the times when we went over, but thank you for giving us an hour of your time. Bridget said two baths, okay? Right, two baths, I told you. Take a bath, use the towel, you still see the dirt, hop back in. Get back in. Do now. it over. I told you, don't go. Do over. Don't go born in the late 60s and early 70s. You come out of there and you looking like an ash, a ash tank. Get back in there. Oh, Katrina, you said it. How that's you know, how can you love someone else when you don't even love yourself? How can you give what you don't have? Mm -hmm. 
All right then. How can you give what you don't have? Amen. Absolutely. That's a whole nother lesson. Yep. That's something we need to think about too. We need to be like one of them. We can go back and can we go back in the chat? How can you give yeah. what you don't have? Amen. So mm -hmm. thank you, Patrina, for that. Thank you, thank you. This has been a great Saturday morning, but we're gonna go ahead and let you all go so y'all can yeah. go do whatever y'all need to do. Because we believe in honoring people's time. Yeah. It's a Saturday. This is your day to relax and do whatever. But we wanted to make sure that you got some kind of nugget from us because we really appreciate the time that you give us. And we really want you to kind of work mm -hmm. with each other. When we're talking in this chat, it's not mm -hmm. about all of the other things. It's about mm -hmm. how we can really collaborate and see different points of views and see how we can go about attacking certain things. We, we, we always involve the word because we don't know nothing else to do. <laughs> That's so, the thing we know to do. The other thing I'll say too is if y'all want to continue to type in the chat or you have questions, concerns, mm -hmm. comments, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. I always go back and check the chat. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all, we friends on Facebook. Y'all can always instant message me. I always go back and check because I never want to, if I have the opportunity to point to somebody or help cover them in a certain area, I never want to miss that opportunity to do so. Mm -hmm. So y'all have a great weekend. We love y'all. We appreciate everything because today so was amazing. Yeah, it was really great. Absolutely amazing. Hey. So um, you're welcome. Y'all enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see y'all next Saturday to discuss more Marriage Matters because, because your, your marriage, marriage matters. matters. All right. Bye. Y'all have a great one.